hey guys and gals, friends of YouTube. I uh, love to fly helis here. Um, I know it's been a while, but uh, we're finally, I'm getting back on the Edge 540. Uh, this will actually be part two. Um, there are going to be some changes that we're basically going to kind of start over. Uh, I'm going to recap some stuff. I, I had started off with the engine mount, which is actually later in the book, but I was going to go ahead and and do that but I've found out some very useful information uh, since the first time I worked on this and uh, I'm not gonna have to cut a hole in the firewall I've uh, I was tipped off by a young man on uh, YouTube a, a new new guy <laughs> as funny as that is he, he had discovered some stuff and he tipped me off to it and, and uh, um, I'm so glad he did because I, I don't want to go to the trouble of cutting that hole in there and taking a chance on weakening the firewall and all that. Um, he had found some stuff on some forums that guys are putting these DLE-20s on these uh, Seagull models Edge 540s. They're using a motor mount uh, from Horizon Hobby that's it's a longer extended mount and what it does it brings the engine the book reads uh, from the firewall to the thrust washer 125 millimeters well with this new motor mount it'll actually put the thrust washer at 134 millimeters so it's going to bring the engine forward nine millimeters that's not a whole lot and it shouldn't throw the weight off that bad uh, I'm trying to check and see if I can find out if anybody had to put weight in the tail uh, but anyway with this motor mount we're going to be able to dismount this thing up and then all I'm actually going to do is reinforce the firewall to make it a little stronger I'm not going to cut a hole in it so the carburetor doesn't have to stick back in there like it said on my first video. So uh, anyway, we'll get started with part two here. And like I said, basically we're just going to kind of start over. Now I had to order this motor mount. Uh, I ordered it yesterday or day before, and uh, it'll be you know later this week before I get it. So what what I'm going to do on this part two, we're going to skip the motor part for right now, and I'm going to go ahead and start probably with the wings and stuff, and we'll work on that. And as soon as I get that engine mount in. Uh, maybe next weekend or one night late in the week I'll I'll get the motor mounted on there and show you guys how to rotate that around drill the holes and, and everything on that so alright let's see what we can do with this thing okay guys uh, we'll start on the wing here and then the first thing you're going to do the the ailerons are stuck in there with the CA hinges but they're not glued so let's pull that out and we're going to pull all of our hinges out and uh, we're going to mark the center line on these. Let me get my light turned around here a little better. Uh, you can measure them, but you can, you can guess these just close. Just mark your center line with a pencil on those. That way you know one's not getting pushed in farther than the other one. And then you will need your uh, thin CA and some T-pins. So I can get my glue unstuck here. Get the pan out of it. Okay. Let's see if we got. Yeah, we got flow. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is stick these hinges back in the hole, halfway, right to that line. Okay, we'll get all four of these in here. I don't know if you can, it's a pretty long wing, so I don't know if you can see all the way up here or not, but I'll try to keep it in view. And, uh, all right, once we get those lined up to our mark, then we are going to stick a T-pin through those. Be careful, don't poke yourself in the hand. I've done that before, believe it or not. Put the pin right on that line. That way, when you shove it in there, you shove your aileron on here, it's not going to slide your uh, hinges back up inside the wing. So, whoops, I pulled that one out. They're kind of stiff. They're hard to poke a pin through, but it'll go. All right. Get this last one in here. Pull plum out of the. And let's just do it like this. We'll start it on the table. Okay. Put that back in there. <coughs> of 
course, you know, make sure your ailerons right. White to the bottom, red to the top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start at one end. And we're going to start feeding the tip of that in and then slowly move down to the next one. Get it started in the groove. And then the next one, you won't be able to see up here at the top because the wing's so long. Unless I can scoot it down here. And we got those three started, so we're going to push that one up. Alright, now, we're going to push this aileron all the way up against the wing. Now, we want to make sure our end is flush out here, but you also want to make sure you've got plenty of a gap here that it's not rubbing. So, uh, this is perfectly parallel. You can take a you can look at it, eyeball it, or you can take a flat ruler and lay on here and slide that up against it. Okay, now we've got that in place right where we want it. So now, we're very carefully we're going to pull the T-pins out. I'm not moving this because we don't want to shove our hinges and get them out of alignment. So we push that up against there. You can fold your aileron down just slightly where you can see where the hinges are. And then take your CA glue, put about four or five drops on each one. I usually do about four. Kind of wiggle it a little bit, but make sure you don't knock it out of alignment. Then make sure it stays pushed up there too. You don't want a big gap between the aileron and the uh, wing. If you get a very big gap in there, a lot of people think you have to have a space in these, but you don't. You don't want a space. It's tapered so that it will bend back and forth. If you get a very big gap in there, uh, you're going to end up um, with a vibration and fluttering. Your aileron will flutter, so you don't want any, you'll get a whistling sound. So you don't want any air coming through there. If you do have a plane, a lot of the large scale planes, they seal this seam with a piece of covering so that no air at all can get through there. See, I've got that butted very tight up against that, but it still flexes. Now, we've got this side done. Now we're going to turn it over and do the same thing to the bottom side. About four drops. And you can see right where your hinge is. So That'll just wick right in there and uh, stick to the wood and everything. I, I've flown for going on seven years now, and the most of your smaller planes have CA hinges. You get into giant scale, you're going to get into you know, big plastic or metal ones, but I have never had one of these come loose. Knock on wood. I probably just jinxed myself. But <laughs> Okay, uh, got that one done. Uh, I'm going to pause it for a minute, and I'll do the other wing, which is just identical to this, and then we'll go to putting the servos in. One more thing. <clears throat> While you've got these ailerons off before you glue your hinges, always check all around the edges. Check your seams or your covering, all the corners. Uh, because it's a lot easier if you find a little loose spot you can take your covering iron and heat this down and really make sure that's tight if you especially you know you can do the wrinkles later but down in these crevices it's hard to get to and stuff on the corners go ahead and do it now uh, this one's all tight I don't have any loose spots all it's, it's very well covered but you can do that before you put it together and it's a lot easier to get down in here sometimes so keep that in mind also uh, forgot to point out another little tip I usually you have to take a razor knife and make sure your gaps are open good they're, they're pretty snug they just they build these real fast and uh, sometimes they just aren't cut good this one's real tight although the hinge was in it it pulled out and now I can't hardly get it back in there so and that thing's extremely tight um, the rest of them went in alright so anyway golly all right, now, that hinge, there we go. I honed it out just a little bit so it'll go up in there. So, got them all in. Now we'll glue this one and move on. Okay, here's another little tip uh, when you're gluing your hinges and stuff. It's very common to drip or splash or drop glue somewhere on a wing. Keep you a bottle of this debonder handy. Uh, if you get a drop of it on your wing somewhere, uh, you can wipe it off with a paper towel and then as soon as you can put a little bit of this debonder on the towel and it'll just clean right off, just slick as a whistle. Uh, just be sure don't get it in any joints or anything that you want to stay glued, but it will clean off your glue if you drop CA on there. So just another little tip for you. Okay, uh, servos in the wing are uh, just 
just shy of having enough length to come out. So I made some servo extensions. Um, I make my own extensions because I like to color code the tips, uh, especially on a plane of this caliber, a stunt plane or something. I, I like to uh, put my ailerons on separate channels. And anyway, I always I like to do like yellow on the right and blue or green or something on the left. But anyway, I've got my extensions made, and I, I have a whole uh, video on making your servo extensions if you're interested in building your own and where to get the parts and stuff. Um, I get these colored tips off of eBay from uh, uh, his site is uh, Cap 10 Knight, C-A-P-1-0-K-N-I-G-H-T and he's really reasonable and he has the pliers and everything to do this also but I do have a whole video on just building servo leads if you want to watch it but uh, I like to do mine you know because I like to color code them. Um, and it's just fine. You can make them exactly what length you need them. All right. Um, now, another thing, when you plug this on to your servo lead, uh, you can do one of two things. You can use these safety clips. I also can get them from him, or Tower Hobbies has them real cheap. Uh, you can put a clip on here, which is what I do on the end when I put my plane together at the field and I plug this into the lead out of the receiver, I put a safety clip on it because I'm going to remove it later. Actually, these ones that go inside the wing, the best way to do them is a piece of heat shrink. and Because uh, it's permanent pretty much. You're not going to be removing uh, this joint, you know, for any reason unless you crash the plane and destroy it or something. You're going to use them as something else. But anyway, let me start from this end. Um, you make your wire plugged in good and snug. <clears throat> and there's all different sizes of this heat shrink. I get mine at Harbor Freight. Automotive stores all have them. And just make sure your connection's good and tight in there. Slide that up over it. Take your heat gun. Heat that down. It takes just a second. You'll see it start to shrink up there. Flip it over and do the other side. And that way, there's no way under the sun that joint is going to get. Uh, ripped loose. It's just not possible. It's good and solid. So that's how I do mine that are going to be inside the wing or for instance a lead going from a receiver back to the tail end to a elevator servo or something. I use the heat shrink. Something you're not going to be undoing all the time but if it's where you plug into the receiver wire then I use a safety clip to keep the vibration stuff from pulling that apart. So two different ways of doing that there. <coughs> all right excuse me. Um, all right, now we've got that out of the way. We are going to take our servo panel out. Now, be careful doing this. I recommend using two hands because if you're doing one, this thing can slip out of your hand and poke a hole right through your covering. So I hold it with one hand at the bottom and one up here, and that way, hopefully, I can not be real clumsy and keep a hold of it. Another thing you want to do when you're building on your table, don't lay your screws on, on the table itself anywhere here. Uh, if I lay these screws down here and I bump them, they get rolled over here, and then I take my wing and lay it down, and I'm working on it, sliding it around. Next thing you know, when you turn this back over, you've got a big old cut or dings in your covering. So always put your screws. I use like a, a little lid off a plastic container or something. I keep all my parts in little stuff like this. So I'll take a lid. Uh, I've got this one, and I lay my screws on the top of this, and that keeps them up off the table. All right. Um, we will pull this out and then I like to mark mine and I'll mark uh, front that direction and uh, then I'll put an arrow toward the inside toward the fuselage it'll, it'll actually this one will only fit one way well no it will go the other way so anyway just to keep from getting them turned around some planes they'll only fit one way but a lot of them will go both so I uh, mark that so I'll know for sure which way my servo goes. Now, I'm going to test fit this. This one already has the blocks glued on here. Uh, a lot of them you have to glue them on yourself, but it's not hard to do. So that'll go right on there. The servo arm will stick up out of there. Um, now, I don't need, I have no use for this arm down in here. So I'm going to cut it off. Um, another thing, this is the stock servos aren't horns that come with this. I'm not a big 3D fan. I, I like. I think it's very awesome to watch people do it. I just don't have much desire to learn how to do it myself. Uh, 
uh, I like to just fly an airplane. Uh, I like fast better than I do hanging it there on the prop. But anyway, if you are going to do 3D and stuff for this plane, you're probably going to need some longer servo horns uh, aftermarket or something to go on here. But I'm not going to set it up like that. I just I just want to fly it. So we're going to use the standard. Now, there are some planes come <coughs> with a string already run out here and taped. This one does not. But it's a large opening. It's easy to get to. All you got to do is take your, I'm, I made this, let me show you this, I made this little plumb bob. This is out of a, a fuel filling probe that I made. It had a little hole in it, a perfect tight string on, but you can use a little washer or anything on a heavy duty piece of thread or string and then just put that in your hole. Let me see if I can get the camera up here. Put that down in your hole and just drop it straight down. And there we go. It comes out the bottom. Now, what I'll do is I can either tie this end on to my servo lead, pull it through, or I can tie a piece of thread on here and run it through here and tape it down until I'm ready to use it. Um, this one I will probably just tie onto the end and pull it through, but the first thing I want to do is get my servo mounted up to my block. So, um, we're going to take our handy dandy little drill. I love this little Ryobi drill. I got it at Home Depot. It's about 30 bucks or so. Variable speed or two speed. It's got the clutch setting for screws. Quick connect. I love this thing. It is just a... I don't know how you could build without one. So, um, let me get a drill bit. And I need to get my screws out of here. I'm about forgetting to do a bunch of stuff. So... I need one. And again, I'm going to lay them over here out of the way. There's four for that wing. And four for the other wing. Alright. Um, you know what? Let me. Oh, no, that is the longest orange I've got. There. Okay. Now, we're going to take our servo and lay it on here. And um, what I like to do, oh, what did I use? Um, gosh, I can't remember what I used now. A little spacer. Hang on just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, I remember what it was now. It was a piece of a large heat shrink. Uh, I'll stick it up in here from the bottom. And what I'm doing here is I want to create a, a spacer. I'm not going to leave it in there. I'm going to take it out. But you need a space between your servo and this plate of wood. And that, what that does is keeps down vibration. If the servo is mounted solid, flat against the wood, then it picks up more vibration. Vibration uh, is a killer for servos over time. So put your rubber spacer in there, and that keeps it off the wood while you drill your holes. Um, let me see. I need a bigger drill bit. Yeah, I need this one. Okay, now firmly hold that in place on your spacer and be careful not to hit your wire when you drill through here. Oh, let's see, I almost did. Okay, now I'm going to put a screw in that to hold that in place. Not tighten it all the way down. Whoops, that don't fit. Uh, this one. Okay, I'll go ahead and screw that one down. Not all the way, but just enough to snug that. And we'll do this side. I need to turn my drill up on high and go a little faster. There we go. Much better. That's what was wrong. Now I will tack that screw in. Just start thread it about halfway through. The reason I'm not going to tighten them all down is because I'm going to pull them back out and put CA in them. Okay, now we're going to hold that down firmly and do this side. Okay, we're going to start these screws. 
down in there. Ah, I get to get them in the right hole. There it goes. All right, we'll screw those down. All right, I've threaded them in there. Now, I'm going to take them out. And I'm going to show you why. Okay, we've drilled our holes in here and screwed our screws in and backed them out. Now we're going to put uh, thin CA in the holes and that glue will harden back up in those threads and when you screw your screw in there it's it's real tight uh, it almost makes a lock tight out of it so it won't uh, won't back off due to any vibration or anything so anyway let's put that up we'll let that dry for just a second and we can uh, put our servo in there really snugs those down when you glue them they won't come loose all right and also uh, you know I had my spacer under here when I drilled the holes so now when I put this back on here I've got you can see air between the the servo and the board so it's not leaning laying right on the wood and doesn't pick up near as much vibration uh, vibration is not good for electronics though over time they can cause a servo to go bad and stuff so you want to try to eliminate all the vibration you can um, get a better screwdriver okay here we go now at this point um, we want to before you mount this in here we want to link a receiver up and hook this up and, and center it 90 degree before we do anything else. So hang on just a second. Okay, got my radio set up with my Edge 540 named and everything. So now we're going to take a receiver and put the bind plug in where the bind battery goes and then we'll plug a battery into any other outlet. This is a JR Spectrum system that I use. Futaba is a little bit different. Um, okay, got our blinking light. I need to turn that off now while I hold the button in on the back of my radio and turn the power on the light will go out it starts blinking slow go out again and then on solid there we go we're linked up ready to go all right pull the bind plug out of there now let's initiate everything plug the battery in the light should come on and there we go. Ready to go. Now, we're going to put this in the aileron spot. And we have movement. All right. That arm is already perfectly 90 degree. So we're good to go on this one. We can install this now. So unplug it. Unplug our battery for now. Well, actually, let's wait a minute. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and center this other one. Oh, we got, ah, turn the power off. There we go, lights on. Alright, plug into the aileron channel. And that one is off center. So, we're going to take uh, the servo horn off. And we're going to try to, with the splines, get it as close to 90 as we can. And there we go, I moved it one click and it's perfect. Um, we're going to cut the bottom half off. Well, I don't know which side yet. Hang on, we got to wait till we get it mounted. But anyway, that's centered up now. Put the screw back in it so I don't forget it. I'll be taking these off again to put quick connects on probably. Depends on what kind of linkage is with this. So. Anyway, here we go. These are DS, uh, JR DS821 HV, high voltage. I can run these directly off a 7.4 battery if I want to. So, 
without a voltage regulator. All right, now we'll unplug that. We'll lay that aside. And uh, we'll put my receiver in a container here to keep it protected. And turn the radio off, move it out of the way, and then now I've got my uh, little plumb bob threaded through here. So what I'm going to do is take, I've got a loop in the end of this, and I will just make a noose out of it. Put that around the end of that, tighten her down, pull her through. This is a pretty good size opening in here. Pull straight through pretty easy, so. Alright, there we go. Now, let's get our screws off our lid over here. And you know what? I forgot. These were already screwed in here when I got it. Some of them aren't, but this one was. But I also want to put the NCA in those holes. Any wood hole, any holes you drill in your woods uh, for wood screws, you need to CA them so it will tighten them up. It makes it like a, a Loctite on there. They won't come loose. Like I said, these gas engines have a lot more vibration than a uh, nitro engine. So we'll glue those holes. Let that set just a second because we don't want this gluing down to the surface. If we ever want to take it out, it'd be we'd have to break the wood to get it loose. So we're gonna let that dry just a little bit and then we'll screw those down. So be right back. Okay. Um, our glue's good and dry. So we're not gonna bond this to the wing. Now Again, I'm going to hold this with two hands so I don't uh, ram a hole in my covering. I have done that before. So that'll make these uh, screws stay a lot tighter in this. So. All right, got those good and snug down. I'll probably end up having to take this back out. Depending on the linkage, I'll have to drill this hole out. I didn't think to do that. But uh, let me get the linkage stuff out, and we'll get ready to hook that up. Okay, uh, I do have to drill the hole out in the servo horn. And so what I'm going to do, rather than take that out, I'm just going to put a block of wood behind it and just drill it while it's on here. You just need something to hold a little pressure to it. That way you don't skin up your covering and stuff when your bit goes through. Now, let's see if this is going to fit. Yeah, that goes right in there. Okay, we'll just leave that on there for now. Now we'll put the screws back in. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, we're going to mount the control horn on here now. And we've got out uh, three bolts. 30 millimeters long and they will go through your control horn all the way through the control service the aileron to a back plate and thread into that um, trim off the little barbs off of this now we've got this already on here oh, here's something I want to do hang on a minute let me get some line Take you some. It, a lot of these kits come with it, um, but I I like this heavier duty fuel line that I use for mine. Cut them about two, three millimeters long. We we'll need four of those, two for each aileron. Okay. You something else that'll help on this a lot of times is a pair of long, skinny nose, needle nose pliers. 
Um, let's see if I can get that. All right, I'm just going to stick that on the end of that for right now, and the same thing here. Stick it up over this so it's on there uh, like that, and that way it's it's there. Now, if this was already threaded on your bolt or whatever, and you didn't want to undo it, then you can take your little skinny needle nose, push it up in there, and you can stretch that out with with those pliers and run your clevis in there and pull it off, and then you have it on there like that. And now you want to slide this down to there until you get it clipped on and everything adjusted in place, and then you can slide that up. It keeps that from coming unsnapped in flight. So always remember to put them on there. Okay, now we got to see. Now you want to get this in a straight line back here. You can mark it. The instruction book actually says mark it with a pen. We can do that, I guess. Uh, you want a straight line from your servo arm coming back. So right there will be the center of our control horn. Now you want the center line of these holes right directly over the center of this seam between your wing and your control surface. If you get that too far back or too far forward it will bind when it's moving. So you want that line of holes directly over the center of this seam uh, right here. Let's just get an idea. Let's screw this down on here. We're going to put Loctite on them and then they've got lock nuts too, but they're nuts. Let's see. Yeah, we'll have to screw it in a ways, but here's what we'll do. Knock a hole. You gotta be careful with all your parts laying on your table. If you slide this wing around underneath side, you can really damage the covering, like I was saying earlier. So keep all debris uh, out of the way on this. Let's see if we can get this silly rod back out of there. It fires. Oops, that's my cutter, my needle nose here. There it comes. Good Lord, tight threaded little booger. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We got the nut back about that far. We're gonna get our Loctite out. <clears throat> and, well, we're gonna have to poke a hole in it. It's clogged up. It kind of clogs up sometimes like your glue. So just take a straight pin or something and push it down in the hole and open it back up. Alright, we're going to lock tight that little booger. Put the lid on here. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, get this out of here. We're going to screw it down into this clevis. Quite a ways. We'll make our adjustment from the other end. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. Now we're gonna let's put it. Make sure we have locked tight under that nut right there. pliers here. Get another pair out. I'm going to hold on to my clevis down here so I don't twist it. And I'm going to tighten that nut down with a pair of needle nose. Against the clevis. Alright, there she bottomed out. Alright, good and snug. Now, we're probably not going to undo this end again. So, I am going to slide my rubber safety uh, deal I made out of hose over the end of that. I'll go ahead and put it on there. We'll make our adjustment on this end. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a clamp. Find my clamp drawer. We're going to clamp that where it stays even. It won't move on us. And... Um, I want 
some pretty good control throws on this plane. I'm, I'm not going to 3D it, but I do want some pretty heavy throws. So what I'm going to do on your control horn, here's how it works. The the higher, the longer control horn you have, in other words, the longest hole out on the control surface is less movement. So, and it's just the opposite on a servo arm, a short arm is less movement. So if you wanted really big, like 3D throws, you'd put a long servo arm on your servo and use the outer hole and then use the closer hole to the surface on your control surface and that will make it very movable. I mean it, it'll, that's how you get it set for 3D and stuff. So we're going to probably use the middle hole on this. Now there again I want to take my block, drill that out. I am going to look and see what the book calls for just, just because but I'm betting I want it set up in the center hole. Um, Well, it doesn't say, so anyway, we're going to use the center hole, so I'll, I'll get some pretty good throw on this aileron, so I'd like to have this at a really fast roll rate. Now, what we'll do, is we'll go ahead and clip this on there, like that, and then we're going to look down this line right here to make sure our... Uh, control horn is going to be in line with the center so it needs to go forward so we're going to screw that in some more actually I'm going to go ahead and put Loctite on it because once we get this set we're going to leave it okay put a little bit of Loctite on there put the lid on it so I don't spill it I've been known to do that. Alright, now let's thread this back down on here. Okay, now let's see where we're at. And you can use a anything for a straight line down that line of holes. So I still need to go, I don't know if you can see that or not. Still need to go forward just a little bit, so we're going to screw it in just a little bit more. And it gets pretty tight. Okay, let's try that. And we're going to hold this. We're going to get our clip snapped together. There we go. We're going to hold that level and put our drill bit in line with our holes and there we go we're dead center with that the center of the groove there between the control surface and the wing so now we are going to take yep that drill bit I'm gonna hold this in place very steady with my fingers and I'm gonna drill a hole straight through now I'm going to go ahead and put one of these through here and I'm going to start the back plate on the other side. Let me get my little, I like my little electric drill for this, little battery powered, it works great. So now I'm going to start my uh, bolt in my back plate. Wow, hang on a minute. Let me check something. Alrighty. These don't thread into the plastic. They got nuts that go on them. Let me look back. I didn't notice that. I guess. You can here see. Yeah, I didn't notice that. These don't thread into the plastic back plate. They have little bitty nuts that goes on the back side. So. We will definitely be lock tighting those down. So anyway, I can shove that up on there. Now, I want to make sure this is centered again, 90 degree to my arm, and I'm going to drill the second hole. 
Okay, let's put the bolt in that. And make sure it starts through the back plate. There we go. There it went through. I put myself in the finger with it. Okay, I don't know if you can see those or not, but I've got, uh, well, I missed it. I'm going to back it back out. Okay, get on there. Okay, there we go. I got them in line. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and screw the nuts down on these to tighten this down before I drill my third hole. Um, so I'm going to put the nuts on here with some Loctite. You can use a little bitty socket. Um, usually what I do I just uh, hold it with a pair of pliers and my little screwdriver on the other side is really all you need is that lock title lock up on there and it won't come loose all right we're going to tighten these down a little bit I'm watching both sides I don't want to dig it into the wing too deep all right now let's very carefully Drill our third hole. Okay, then we'll put our bolt through there. Hang on a minute, get my hole lined up a little better. I almost wish I'd have put these from the other side. So these, because I'm about to cut these off and they're going to stick up. Hmm. You know what? I think I will. I'm going to go through from this side. And that way the head of the bolt will be on top of the wing. It won't show as bad because I'm going to have to cut these off. So let's go ahead and get this one in. Put some Loctite on it. Ah, oh, dropped it. over here all right now I'll get my drill get on the underside get a hold of this all right center down good now we'll back these out one at a time Long threaded little boogers. Oh, still got the nut on it, that's why. I forgot. take the nut off of it. That'll help. <laughs> no wonder it wouldn't come undone. Okay. Now she'll come undone. Alright. Now let's stick that one through on the other side. Put some Loctite on it again, since we wiped all the other off, and put our nut back on. And I'll take a Dremel tool and uh, cut these bolts off of here. But they'll, that way they'll be on the bottom side and they won't, uh, won't show as bad. I've not had any like this before. Usually they just thread into the plastic, 
these go all the way through and you put a nut on them. Each brand of plane is slightly different usually. So. All right, let me get this oven out and turn it over and we'll okay. come back. You got the bolts turned over. Now, when you do your final adjustment on here, you want your receiver on. Uh, so this will center up so you can see we're, we're off right here. I'm going to have to thread it uh, in just a little bit. So what I'll do is unhook this clevis and well, it's tight too. Oh, why are this thing so tight? Let's see if I can get it to turn here. Let me get a hold of this with the pliers. I need to go in probably a full turn. turn let's try half see where we end up make sure these are at a 90 degree oh, went too far there we go now let's clip it on here and see what we got Oh, just a little bit more. Okay. I'll go another full turn. Okay, we're centered up. All right, looking down here, that's hitting just slightly. I may need to cut that hole out a little bit because that's at 100% and I'm probably going to want more throw on that, so I may have to trim that hole out. Uh, right here a little bit farther back it clears going forward but, all right we got that centered up now we'll slide our rubber deal up on here make sure it doesn't interfere okay now let's take a Dremel and uh, very carefully set these bolts off of here. Now, we got our paper towel. Wipe off the black we got on it. You can use denatured alcohol and get these cleaned up really good. Okay, now we got those little bolts cut off of there. Um, one thing we got to do yet is uh, tighten this nut down right here since I've got it all centered up. So let me do that right quick. needs to go that way just a hair. Okay, there we go, 90. 
Now let's screw that down. And we'll hold on to this. Center down. There we go. Alright. Aileron installed. Linkage. Okay. Now. <clears throat> Alright. We have our wings done. And what I'm going to do. Well, that won't probably fall down in there. I'll just stick it down in this hole for now. Okay. Uh, wings are complete. We'll lay them aside and start on the fuselage next. <laughs>